Um, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about MeshMixer. So MeshMixer is a really important software in the manipulation of meshes. It is a bunch of different tools that can do a wide variety of uh, file manipulations and mesh manipulations. Uh, some tools are good for very, very specific things and other tools are quite general and can be used for multiple different things. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to be using a lot of hotkeys. Uh, and so to accommodate for that, uh, uh, it's, it's very convenient that MeshMixer natively actually uh, logs all of their keyboard shortcuts that sort of exist. And so I just want to draw your attention here. If you're ever confused or you don't want to scroll through a video, if you just open up MeshMixer and then you click this keyboard shortcuts uh, button, it'll bring up this PDF, which you can scroll through on your own time. Great. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is import the standard buddy. It lives inside of MeshMixer. It's called the Stanford Bunny. I don't know the history of it, but I'm sure a Wikipedia search will satisfy your curiosity. Um, so the first thing I want to introduce you to is that uh, uh, meshes are made up of vertices and triangles, right? And so down here we can see that there's 5,550 triangles, sorry, vertices, and 10,996 uh, triangles. Now, now, what does this mean? Well, if you use W, so you can see everything I type over here, uh, if you use W, you can see that there's a wireframe, uh, W toggles the wireframe, so we can see all the triangles that the mesh is constructed of. All meshes in MeshMixer, or just all STLs that you'll be dealing with, or OBJ files, are made of uh, triangles, and they meet at vertices. This is important, not just as a fun fact, but also because if you have large numbers of triangles, let's say in the millions, you're going to find, even on some very powerful computers, that it just takes a long time to do certain operations, like make solid or reduce, or any operations that are sort of acting on the entire mesh. Um, so it's important to know that. Um, a quick thing that you want to do, let's say if you have a broken mesh. Uh, oh, sorry, let me, let me hop back for a second. Another thing you'll notice is that the outside is gray and the inside is pink. Now, why is that? Well, STLs have something uh, called a normal vector that corresponds to each triangle, and that tells, uh, and that's the software telling you if it thinks that it's on the outside surface uh, surface of the mesh or the inside surface. Now, this is important when you want to 3D print something because of the way that slicers work, right? You want the outside of your mesh to be actually, uh, you want you want the computer to think that the outside of your mesh is on the outside and vice versa, the inside is actually on the inside. So there's ways that you can flip this. Uh, it's called using the invert tool. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But in general, you don't really have to, it's not something you have to deal with, it's just something you have to be aware of in case it becomes a problem. So how would we fix this, right? We have, a, we have an STL, it's, it has a big sort of cut in it, a big hole in it. Well, the easiest way to fix this is with the inspector tool, which we can get to by clicking I. Right, so we click I and it opens up the inspector tool. Um, we can double click this little call out over here. That'll solve it. Right, so let's say you had, you can imagine you might have multiple holes in your mesh. Let's undo it. Right, so I'm going to use the selection tool S. I'm going to select some mesh. I'm going to use X to delete. So now I have this hole. Um, so now I have multiple holes. So when I use the inspector tool, let me exit out. Uh, when you use the inspector tool, you can see now that I have two holes. So if I only wanted to solve one of the holes, I could double click this one and you see that it fixes it and it sort of refills in the mesh pretty nicely. And you can do the other hole as well by double clicking it. Now let's say you have like a million holes, right? Make a hole here and a hole here and a hole here and a hole here. Uh, and then when you, you escape that other tool and you use the um, inspector tool, you don't want to go around and clicking all of them. So you can click auto repair, auto repair all. Now you'll notice that they're different colors. We'll talk about why that happens in a moment. But for now, um, let's just undo it. And you'll notice that there's another way, in fact, that we can close this up. So I like to use the hotkey Q, right? So that automatically fills it. So that way I don't have to navigate over here. So that is quickly how to use the inspector tool. It's quite useful in the fixing up of simple meshes that are just a little bit broken. Um, and it's a good thing to know that exists.